Hey everybody, welcome to a special episode of Calypso Comeback brought to you by the Foxcast and the NPD. We're here in Florida at the National Parks Depot headquarters. My buddy Matt's inside. He's going to show us the amazing collection that we, they have here. It's filled with Ford, GM, Pontiac, everything under the sun, and they've also got a nice Mustang Alley. He's going to show us everything the NPD does and all the passion and dedication they put behind it. And he's also going to show us a little bit of their warehouse where they find new old stock parts and do buyouts so that they can bring you the best Ford parts and uh, the best stock style parts for all the cars and especially the Fox Body Mustang. That's awesome. ASC McLaren convertible. Yep. That's awesome. It's a good car for reference, especially under the hood, because it's all original. Yeah. And you know, it's Espec projected 86. Especially how rare they like how rare they are. Oh my god, the computer testing. Anytime you see a gold and silver. Uh, uh, GNX, <laughs> which is kind of a you know, not not just a Grand National, but of course it's a GNX. Those are going for big money and I hope they're getting that. That's, I'm like looking at the size, I'm like, I don't, I hate driving is, it, it's like a bus. This is where my dad would lose it, right here. He's got the 70 F100. That's... Yeah, these are, these are what they call, they call them, either, it's either summertime special or springtime specials, I think is wow. what they call springtime specials. And they were these really unique colors that they did Look with the, the interior plaid. and everything else. The Gosh. 70s plaid. Green inside. Yes. That is too cool. Plastic still on the seatbelts, never been dry, awesome. never been like out of the wrapper still got all the original dealer script on the back window it's kind of i love that it doesn't have the uh the under dash climate option though my dad's got that yep wow yeah my my dad's got a 70 xlt yep uh single uh, single cab long bed with 390 in it there's the camper special right yep 250. is that what we're gonna get for a camper yeah, there you go. And it's, the crazy part about it is, is they got they got I think they truck the they bought the truck from the guy like the camper is like almost purely correct like that yeah. looks like it's straight That's out of awesome. the van too like it's not even like it's like a newer camper. The first time I went camping, we actually had the one with the the neck over top oh, in, really? in the bed, and it went in the truck, and we took it, and it had, was it was that same kind of metal with the brown side, yeah. and it had the brown wood paneling inside, and the old awesome. the old plaid uh, pads on the couch and everything. strokey kind of uh, um, pieces and parts with it yeah as far as like the roof line and stuff the window line of course the real power strokes mm -hmm. they didn't dip down as far they, they still made that same transition but they they're shorter the mirrors were up higher it's just you know they do stuff like that you know just to like if you look at the steering wheel and all that stuff it all looks like the, kind of like the power stroke look in those yeah mirrors, it's called the power been, power force This is like the like granddad to the light, uh, the Raptor, pretty much. It's something like that, yeah. Wow. It's, they're they just they're not they they have like uh, they call them X Vins or something like that. So you can never like drive them on you the can't street. drive them on the street. They're just designed for that. Uh, that's a Tempo. Oh yeah. And uh, that's what they that's how they built prototypes in the '80s. It's made out of clay. What? It's made out of clay. Oh. It's not made out of uh, wood, clay, and fiberglass. See. Oh my god. So it's just molded clay. So like when you say make they make those clay models, yeah. this is how they would have done it back then. That's so, like, I've done so much research with that. I've, I've been talking to Molly for like, and I got pictures. I'm trying to get all the decals because I don't know if the, what decals are right. We were trying to go through with the A's and it's... Yeah. Inside is wicked. It's got the um, it's got the Recaros. It's got I see the it. Crazy Recaros in the regatta blue with the netted halos. Yeah, it's oh, wow. it's insane. Like how like it looks like a Mustang in there. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god. The gauges. I mean everything. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty. Uh, it's already done up here. But yeah, see. Man, that's amazing. The steering it's got the wheel. Steering wheel. Steering wheel. Yeah. It, I mean, it's straight up out of everything that was in there. Oh my 
god, it's got the louvers and everything. Every option available except for the car seats and no air conditioning. Because well, it was from Ohio. Yeah. So the guy that bought this car, um, the guy that originally bought the car, I guess, was like some big some guy for for overseas or something like yeah. that. So yeah, that's my. This is 100% everything I would ever want in a dream box. 50,000 original miles. Um, it had some touch up work done in the early 80s, I guess. Um, but other than that, so, but other than that, the car is like, it's just, it's mint. Somebody needs to buy it. Strip all paint off of it, repaint it, and just put it back together. Like, freshen it up as you put it. Where's the yeah. Like that's yeah. like that's what this car needs because it's so all there. I mean, all the harbor for the, the loud blue. I love the dash. Yeah. Uh, see, cool. I would I would give it about five years before I painted it. No, no, I would leave, I drive it right because I would drive it. <laughs> oh, you could go in an unrestored class and it would oh do and it would thing, but you can see like the nose is just a tad off, and I mean, just it's like it's starting yeah. to show its, it's age. Got a little, but, got a little paint fade. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, there's some people can bring that back. You know, who are good at it, so. I would I would do some reversible things like I would take that stock suspension off, lower it just a little bit, keep the suspension perfect. So then when I got tired of it, I would swap it back. But man, it's got to be low and it's got to have got to have some wheels on it. I would I'd put try to put some 17s or 18s on it. For the hobby, people don't know, like some Kevin Marty, yeah, has like. Rick held all the dealer invoices for him. Wow. For all the Fox cars. So that when they get a Marty report. When they have the dealer invoice pictures, you can order that all up. Rick was the one that stored those for years because wow. he had got them in an auction or something. I don't remember what the story was. That's insane. He's had them for a while. If there's any of this stuff you want me to keep off camera, let me know. No, I'm sorry. I'm not worried about it. All right. <laughs> But yeah, see the tanks. I mean, some of the stuff we get in, you gotta take the good with the bad. Some of the stuff, I mean, this stuff unfortunately just has surface rust and all yeah. that. But I mean, here's the look your steering columns. These are, these are, uh, there's uh, yeah. pallets of uh, NOS or 9404 steering columns still on the on the crane on the train cap. Oh my god, and there's bar walls. the bar walls. Yeah, wow. carpet. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. Keep collecting, you'll be able to build one from the ground up in here. Right. Well, you know, we're trying to see the forefront. I mean, I know we might sit on that some of that stuff for quite some time because the SN's not yeah, there yet. Like the Fox stuff is really getting there, but well, we're. I, I see the SN's right now. They are the Fox of right now. Correct. You can still buy, I mean, you can buy a 94.5 Cobra for a reasonable price. Yeah. You can't buy a 93 Cobra for yeah. a reasonable price. The front side of the warehouse is the, uh, the Ford side that we do, which will be. Classic Mustang, Ford truck, Bronco, Fox body, and then SN95. Wow. Cool. So, man. I mean, we really do stick behind the motto that we stock everything that we carry. Yeah. And we have a, we run about a 98% fill rate, so. Wow. And this is my newest buyout, which nobody knows about yet. You're one of the first people that see it. So, this is me going through it. Nice. When I have time. On what? top of designing a catalog and doing my regular what have you what have you found so far i see there's a here's the coolest thing i found so far pack. i mean i found a lot of cool stuff but this is the coolest thing i found so far nos 0304 cobra instrument clusters oh my god there you go look at those new I, edge guys are gonna <laughs> I, I mean i've got i got i got i got i got two or i got four cases of those these are all instrument clusters from all different years makes models wow um, so I've just been going through, I mean, just, I mean, it's all SN95 stuff. I mean, look at the brake light switches. Wow. It's tons of this stuff. It's crazy. Half, I mean, oh yeah, I just replaced, you know, one of those yeah. on the, this is, uh, these have been obsolete for forever. Third brake lights oh, for yeah, those, SN? for SN, yeah, 94 to 98 cars. Those have been obsolete for, so there's a lot of really cool stuff. I had, like I said, I just started going through it, so. I mean, now, you know, you can send it to somebody, tear it apart and get it repopped, right? Yeah, or you know, I mean, I'll keep, I'll always keep, we always keep a couple for us, like you said, just in case yeah. other thing. Yeah. Um, here's uh, leather, leather e-brake shift handles. Oh, nice. Oh, check those out. But they're, Ooh. you know, they're only for '99 Cobras, you know, because yeah. because you know, they're the later ones. But wow. Let me just throw them in the box. I mean, that is amazing. So y'all sell the new old stock stuff, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah this will hopefully all make it in the next catalog. Wow. That's my goal. So. It's just but, limited supply, first come, first serve. Yeah, that's all it really is. I mean, we put all of that first stuff you saw the buy. We just put that one into the catalog. So I got all that sheet metal in the catalog, those gas tanks, all those spindles, all that stuff is in the current catalog and on the current website. This stuff is just brand new. Like, wow. I literally just got it. So.
This is um, so this is our whole like receiving side. Now we have four stores, which you know, I mean, most people know that. This is our corporate office, so everything comes in here. Um, this is an uh, export shipping department, so this is everything that we do use, that we ship overseas. Uh, our receiving department, everything comes in there, and we have shipping that everything goes out from there, of course, too. So, but. The only cars are not in chronological order, so, but they are in here, of course. But this is Mustang Alley. So, wow. But that's the 300 million Ford. Oh that's the God. one that the big picture where Bill Ford's driving it off the assembly line. Very last Mach 1 produced. Wow. Um, Rick and them just acquired that. So, the guy worked for uh, the assembly plant, and how this car came about was the guy that was the assembly line worker was the head of that car being built he that came off the same assembly line in detroit yeah and he was responsible for that and this car was in our michigan store in the showroom and they only made two sets of decals one that's on the car and an extra backup set in case they screwed it up yeah and the assembly man manager saw the car when he came in to buy parts from us and said where'd you get that car Rick, they went through the whole story he says well i have the extra spare decal set for that car wow so the guy goes but i also have something else for which is this Mach one and he had wanted the last one. He had every assembly line worker that touched the car, that turned a nut or a bolt, signed both of the posters cool. of every worker on there. Then he had to be photographed every single one of them doing it. This is the extra 300 million decal kit, the backup wow. set. This is where the whole car came from. Oh and then he got pictures that you're not allowed to get. This is the where they weld the body together. Wow. So, cause he's the plant manager, so he's yeah. able to get that. Yeah. And then he got, and then he has um, two photo albums of all of the people working on the cars, which is really super cool. That's so neat. Like putting, see, the last mock. Wow. Like doing, going through yeah, all the inspections, wow. pretty cool. Like that's why, this is why we do what we do. Cause yeah. it's this kind of stuff. Yeah. But the cool part about it is, is this is the last mock one. They gave him, this is the assembly line tool that put every Declan Mach 1 emblem on. This is the, the jig wow. they used to set them. Oh my that God. is so cool. cool. So, and they gave him a couple extra decal kits and stuff like that. So this is like, when you talk about history, how we were talking about like, yeah. you know, building yeah. history, like this is, this is it. Like this yeah. is what. I feel like that'd be a great Ford commercial nowadays. You know, like the last. The automotive archeology. span Then you got the, the normal 2000 Cobra R. This is. Oh yeah, just no big deal. S351 convertible, like that was the pinnacle car back then. Number 38. It was a 500 plus horsepower they made. Wow. They were, uh, so. Wow. Rick drove that, was his daily driver for a while. So, nice. uh, the 95R only has like 36 or 38 miles on it. And when Rick got that car, the cool part about that is he ordered that car brand new. They brought it on a trailer here. Yeah. They took it. I only had like two miles on it. They took it, put it on an open tra or a post trailer, took it to Gainesville, and they raced it the day, this first life it was raced. Wow. They raced it like, they raced it three or four times that night, put it on the trailer, and then it sat. The rest of the time. <laughs> Man. Just got the full feel of it and put it up. This is the Indy Pace car. The one. The one. The that one. led the, the field. One. Yep, the one. Uh, it's got all built by Roush. It's got a fire suppression system. The light bar and everything is with it. Wow. Um, so here is the photos from that oh, yeah. race. Um, our, uh, my good friend Dan Aikens got these from the Historical Museum from Indianapolis. You can see that the one is still in the bottom corner of the car, which which is, that's what this car, if you look at it, has it. Yeah. Um, and it's an automatic. It's not a, it's so it, anybody could have drove it. Yeah. And then you can see it's got all the trippy, uh, like the switches and everything in it and stuff like, like that. So then they got the 93 Cobra that was, it's never been another. Just the way where they came. So they're still in the packaging wow. of things, the antenna, all of it. it looks so nice. It smells like 1993 in there. I love it when I get in every time. <laughs> it smells like 1993, that's what I always say. It's so nice. Because it sounds weird, but the Fox body cars, the leather and the materials they use has a unique smell, and SN95 cars have a unique smell. That's sickness when you know that, but yeah. in and out of cars, <laughs> don't you know that? Like, you know that it is. That is the last fox that rolled off the line, right? That's correct. That's the correct. very last one. So we have both. We have the. That's the very first. That's the first. That's the last. Everybody argues that car, whatever. But. Which car? 
That's, that that's the first. Why? That's VIN number one. It's serialized VIN number one. It is the very first serialized VIN number Fox body. Um, so. And a lot of people argue that there's like, possibly there's more than one because they did build cars in San Jose and in Detroit. Mm -hmm. So there, I think there could be two VIN number ones. VIN number ones because I think the VINs had what assembly plant it was built in. So there could possibly be two VIN ones. Okay, so I've got the magazine that these two are in. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think I remember the red vinyl top. Very rare. Not very yeah. many of them have vinyl, had the vinyl top. But Ford must have gone all hog wild because the original Ford part numbers, this piece of trim molding that's here, mm -hmm. they have it in all the different colors they were going to offer the vinyl top in. So, like, you could have bought it as a service part in yeah. that color. So, wow. they, I guess they planned on it. There's the, the start and finish right there. That's amazing. Yeah. And then that's the 150 moon. Wow. I like that. I always love that color yellow too. I love that and the cream color they did. Oh yeah. The like really rare one or whatever. I saw one of those and I was like, that's that's the color. That's it. Got a bunch of other memorabilia. This is the uh, one of the prototype or the was the engine that sat in the uh, Windsor assembly plant. So this is only one of the two or three extra uh, 5 8 intake manifolds they built. Wow. Because they only built enough for the supply lane, but they built a couple of extra ones um, for them. So this was the Windsor assembly plant that was sitting in the, in the showroom. This car's only got, I think it's got like 36, 58 miles on it. This car's, wow. So... I absolutely I've loved those seats forever. I want those seats. Those are freaking awesome. Yeah, that's what's in the pace car. My, my, I'm gonna keep them in mind. Yeah, that's cool. There's the blue car that was on the catalog cover. That's Rick's car. Yeah. Or one of his cars. I mean, these are all kind of his cars, but that's amazing. It's like, this is like super sleeper. It's a Ford Executive 70, and it's yeah. got the 428 Cobra Jet oh in it. God. It's like super sleeper. Oh like, my God. Straight, you know, racer special. Yeah. I like it. So. God, the Cobra Val covers. Yeah. What's the story? That's just a 390. Oh, 390. So, okay. Yeah. It's an original, all original 390 car. Um, it has like a whole bunch of crazy options, which they all came with, but it had like the, the black wheels and all yeah. that stuff. And then the yeah, the boss horse one. The holy grail. <laughs> it's got a it's the original block and motor uh, 429, but it's been punched out, so it's got like 490 cubic inches or something. Wow. Um, GT500KR. Yep. Yeah, we drove that car to the 35th anniversary show. That was in, the one that was in Birmingham. We drove it from here to there. He drove that car all the way there, and we got there. People were flipping out. They could not. <laughs> they could, it was when it was still red. Yeah. He took that. I took my red '94 Cobra. We took my buddy took his Lightning. And we, like we all just drove up, and yeah. when we got there, people were like, "Oh, so you brought the car?" And he's like, "Yeah, I drove it here." They're like, "Oh, well, you on your trailer?" No, no, no. I drove the car <laughs> from Florida. Like we drove it all the way here. We stopped, had lunch. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it was. You know, that's what they're. You know, they are yeah, made for. That's what they're made for. So that's that's my whole philosophy, man. Like that's why, I like you know, the the still in the wrapper cars are really amazing, and seeing them in person, it's like you go back in time. But and, it, and I appreciate I, I appreciate them driving, you know. But it is nice to see cars that are still in the wrapper because yeah. it gives you great representation. It's like somebody is saving history for that most. Like yeah. think about if you could go back. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be, you know. And it gives you it gives you that slice of you know you you can't buy it, but if you were to go and look at one on the showroom in '93. Yeah. That's what it would look like, right, you know. Exactly. You get to see everything as it came in, as as it was packaged. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, folks, sitting here on my couch, just got done editing that video. Realized that I forgot to shoot an outro, so uh, I'm shooting it here. I'm gonna throw it back in and finish editing editing the video. But uh, huge thanks to Matt for giving us a behind the curtains look at MPD. Um, huge thanks to Caleb at the Foxcast for hooking it up for me. Um, and had a real joy meeting Matt at Mustang Week this year um, and just really thankful for his hospitality showing us you know what all they do what they carry how they do it um, and how they're able to find these hard-to-find parts that nobody else can get 
um, because they truly are automotive archaeologists. They go back, they find the stuff that wasn't sold, that's still in the package, it's still in the box, and they put it online and put it in a catalog for guys like us to buy and uh, make our, you know, 30-year-old cars that much cooler with a brand new part still in the bag from Ford. Um, so, huge thanks for having us, um, allowing us to stop on our road trip home and uh, showing us around and showing us what they do in MPD. So, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, field trip with Calypso Comeback and uh, stay tuned for the next video. See you guys soon.